Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, uh, and in today's video, we're going to be talking through the Week 7 Monday Night Football Showdown slate on DraftKings. Uh, for this Monday night, we got a game between the uh, 49ers and the Vikings, so we're going to talk through this showdown slate, guys. Like we always do, go from top to bottom, hit on all the playable options, uh, all the guys that I do have interest in on this slate. There are some important injuries we're going to have to talk about for this game. Uh, no Debo Samuel, already been ruled out for this one. Christian McCaffrey, listed as questionable, looks like he's going to play. We'll be sure to talk about him. Um, and I think those are kind of the two main injuries. Definitely the Debo Samuel injury, him getting ruled out, does kind of make this slate pretty interesting. So we're going to talk through everything, guys, just before we do get started with the breakdown. As always, um, if you guys do enjoy these DFS videos and if they do help you out, make sure you hit that like button down below. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button as well if you have not yet. Also, go check out Prize Picks. If you guys have never heard of Prize Picks, we are partnered up with Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a simple, easy DFS site to use. It's more focused on player projections. So it's different than DraftKings and FanDuel and Yahoo and these other sites. You know, on Prize Picks, you're not building out a lineup. You're not, you know, competing against other players. It's just you versus the Prize Picks projections. And as you can see, they have projections posted already for Monday Night Football's game uh, for the Monday Night Football game. And once we get closer to the start of the game on Monday night, you'll probably see even more props get posted to the board. You can see all the different categories they have, all the different props they offer, ton of different you know stat types. And on Prize Picks, they do offer a ton of other sports as well. So you can like you can mix and match sports on Prize Picks. It's a lot of fun. You guys definitely need to be playing over there. If you're not signed up for Prize Picks yet, get signed up. Use that promo code NOAH. When you do sign up, and you will get your first deposit matched up to one hundred dollars. And I do want to mention that Prize Picks does have a free square available for the NBA season, which does start on Tuesday. Super excited for NBA and. Prospects has given us a free square. Uh, Steph Curry's points prop discounted down to 0.5. Take that over. Uh, obviously, take Steph Curry over 0.5 points. And then just find any uh, plays you like to pair with that. It doesn't have to be NBA plays. It can be NFL plays. So if there's some NFL props you like for Monday Night Football, you can pair those with the free square. Um, if you're watching this video on Sunday when I upload it, if there's props you like for Sunday Night Football, you could pair that with the free square. Just make sure to use that free square before it goes away. Uh, again, the NBA season does start on Tuesday, and that Warriors-Suns game starts at 10 o'clock Eastern time, so you have uh, until then to use the free square. It's available for both new users and existing users. Um, and if you're not on Prospects yet, I think this is definitely an incentive to get over there, use that free square, hopefully make some money off of it. And again, guys, if you don't have an account on Prospects yet, if you sign up and deposit using promo code NOAH, you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. Yeah, guys, let's talk through this uh, this slate. Let's talk through this game. What I'm liking, we'll start off at the top of the player pool and just work our way down. So to no surprise, uh, Christian McCaffrey, the most expensive option on the slate coming in at 12K. We do have to talk about McCaffrey's health heading into this game. Listed as questionable, all reports are uh, you know, signaling that McCaffrey's going to play here. There is some you know, reports that McCaffrey could like be limited a little bit. I don't think he's going to be limited enough to where he's going to be like out of play on this showdown slate. I mean, McCaffrey is still going to project incredibly well. Like the last two weeks, he's had floor games and he has still put up 14 DraftKings points. Like his floor is just so incredibly high. The ceiling is massive for McCaffrey. We saw him put up you know, 51 DraftKings points against Arizona. Like that is obviously 51 is kind of an outlier performance, but it's always possible for McCaffrey to have those type of games. Just the usage he gets both on the ground and in the passing game. He's the you know, number one fantasy running back for a reason. The guy just has a massive workload. Even though you know he's maybe a little bit banged up heading into this game, I don't think he's going to be limited enough to where we need to you know be fading him on the showdown slate. So McCaffrey is a clear top play here. Um, definitely a guy I would probably want to be building around now. If you're going to like, if you're going to play McCaffrey in the captain spot, you're going to be really thin on salary because he is super expensive, 18k at the captain spot. But man, I mean it's hard to you know argue against it just with the massive ceiling that he does have. Uh, but then you have Brendan Ayuk at 10800 who's kind of coming in at a really expensive price tag. And I think at this price tag, Ayuk might see lesser ownership than maybe we would expect. Obviously, there's no Debo Samuel for this game, so you do expect a much bigger role for Brendan Ayuk. You expect him to see even more targets than normal. But this is a pretty steep price tag. He's more expensive than both of the quarterbacks. I think Ayuk's definitely in play for tournaments. Is he someone that I would be playing in cash games? You know, if I was building out an optimal lineup, would I be playing Brandon Ayuk at this price tag? I don't think so. I think in cash games, you just want to get up to Christian McCaffrey. But Ayuk definitely has upside in tournaments. We've seen him put up big games this season. I think his role is going to be even better without Debo Samuel. Um, I have no issue paying up for Ayuk in tournaments, but for cash, you know, I would definitely say he's probably a little bit overpriced for what he's going to project for. 
And then the quarterbacks, I think, are you know, very solid options here. You know, quarterbacks are typically always going to be strong plays on showdown slates. Kirk Cousins coming in at 10,600, and then Brock Purdy is 10,200. You know, these quarterbacks aren't super cheap, but I think they're, you know, at these price tags, they are definitely strong plays. We've seen Kirk Cousins have a pretty high floor this season. I know he had a pretty bad game last week against Chicago, had a rough game against Carolina, but he's been good in his games at home this season. I think that's something we definitely want to note. If you look at Cousins' home and road splits since he's been with Minnesota, he has played a lot better at home in Minnesota in the Dome. And it kind of makes sense because typically quarterbacks, you know, it's just it's easier for a quarterback to play in a Dome versus like on the road where you know, weather could play a factor, stuff like that. So I think playing at home here is definitely good for Kirk Cousins. The matchup is not good by any means. I mean, this 49ers defense is really good. This is definitely one of the toughest matchups for quarterbacks. But as, you know, what are they? In this game, they're like six, seven-point favor or seven-point underdogs, excuse me. A seven-point underdogs, like this is probably going to be a game where Minnesota is going to be playing from behind. Kirk Cousins is going to have to throw. And this Minnesota team is already a very pass-heavy offense. When they're trailing, they're going to be dropping back a ton. And I could definitely see this being a game where they're going to be playing from behind. So Kirk Cousins, despite the tough matchup, I think is a very solid play, uh, both for cash games and for tournaments. I don't think I would be playing Cousins in the captain spot. But for, you know, cash games and tournaments, I think he's, you know, strong in the flex spot. And then same could be said for Brock Purdy. Don't think I'm going to play Brock Purdy in the captain spot. I would just rather play his receivers. You know, I would rather play Ayuk or maybe McCaffrey. But for cash games, I think, you know, Purdy is a very solid high floor option here. We haven't seen a massive ceiling from uh, Brock Purdy this year. But again, the floor has been really good. Despite that game last week against Cleveland, I mean, that was a really... Tough matchup, hostile environment, on the road, plus the weather in that game was not great either. I'm definitely expecting a bounce-back performance from Brock Purdy here and a much better matchup against Minnesota in a dome where there's no weather concerns. I think this is a good spot for Brock Purdy. Um, him and Cousins, I think, project very similarly. The matchup's probably better for Purdy. Between the two, I think I'd give a slight edge to Purdy if I could only play one of the two quarterbacks, but both quarterbacks, I think, look like really good options here. And then you have... T.J. Hawkinson, who's 8,800, without Justin Jefferson, you know, for however long he's out, we should see a much bigger role for T.J. Hawkinson. Now, Hawkinson was already playing, you know, on pretty much every snap. I mean, last week, he played 79% of the snaps. He's typically going to play, like, around 80 to 85% of the snaps most weeks. He's going to be out there for a large majority of the snaps. You just expect, without Jefferson, there's going to be more targets heading Hawkinson's way. And last week, he did see eight targets in that game against uh, against the against the Bears, six catches for 50 yards. Hawkinson, pretty good fantasy tight end. He's always been a good receiving tight end. He's a guy they can target a lot in the red zone. He's a big body. He is expensive, though, at 8,800. He's not super cheap on this slate. I definitely would rather go to some of the guys priced below him, Jordan Addison, George Kittle, um, Alexander Madison, KJ Osborne. Like I think these guys are probably better plays points per dollar-wise. But with his price tag being so high, Kind of similar to Brandon Ayuk, I do expect ownership to come in a little bit lower on T.J. Hawkinson because he is 8,800. Um, so if you want to go there in tournaments, I'm totally fine with it. For cash games, I probably would not go to Hawkinson at that price tag. These guys below him are probably going to project a lot better. You, know, you have Jordan Addison and K.J. Osborne who are both you know, going to see bigger roles without Justin Jefferson. Last week, we did see Jordan Addison, uh, Jordan Addison have a you know decent game. Only had three catches, but he did get into the end zone. 28 receiving yards and a touchdown. Um, you know, last week, if you look at the snaps for Jordan Addison, he played 90 or no, he played 86% of the snaps. He was out there for a, a, lar a large majority of the snaps. And without Justin Jefferson, you're pretty much going to have uh, KJ Osborne and Alec, uh, KJ Osborne and Jordan Addison playing on you know, almost every snap. Um, now the matchup here, not ideal, but at 7,600, I think Addison is cheap enough to where he is firmly in play here. And the KJ Osborne at 6,400, I like quite a bit as well. You know, last week, we did see Osborne get five targets, four catches for 48 yards. Didn't have as good of a game as Jordan Addison, but the usage was good. The playing time was great. 90-plus percent of the snaps last week for K.J. Osborne. I do expect him to continue to have a big role while Justin Jefferson is out. So, definitely think K.J. Osborne at 6,400 looks really good here. And then you have George Kittle at 7,200 sandwiched in between them. Now, George Kittle has been a boom-bust tight end this season. You look at his game log. Four DraftKings points, six DraftKings points, 16 DraftKings points, two DraftKings points, 27 DraftKings points, one DraftKings point. Like, it seems like Kittle either smashes or he completely duds. He's definitely a guy that I like to play in tournaments because typically his ownership is always low, especially on the main slates. Now, obviously, for Showdown, people are going to play Kittle here. He's going to get ownership. 
Is he going to get a ton of ownership, though, compared to the guys priced around him? I guess that's to be determined. We'll have to see what the projections say when they come out on Monday. Because there is no Debo Samuel here, I do expect Kittle to project better than he normally would, and I would expect his ownership to be a little bit higher than maybe we would think. Um, just because when you look at this you know, 49ers passing game, who else is really Brock Purdy going to throw the ball to? Like You don't really expect you know, Jawan Jennings, uh, Ronnie Bell, Ray Ray McLeod. Like, even though these guys are probably going to play more without Debo Samuel, like those are not guys that are going to demand a bunch of targets. So when Brock Purdy's throwing the ball, it should mean a lot of opportunity for Christian McCaffrey in the passing game, a lot of opportunity for Brandon Ayuk, and I would think a lot of opportunity for George Kittle as well. So at 7,200, I'm fine going to Kittle here. For cash games, I think I would probably prefer going to Osborne for cheaper or getting up to Addison. But for tournaments, no issue with Kittle on this slate. I would not be surprised if this is another big Kittle game. He uh, he busted last week in that matchup against Cleveland, but this definitely feels like a bounce back spot for Kittle in a much better matchup. And you know, without Debo Samuel uh, as well, that's obviously a boost for Kittle. And then I do want to talk about Alexander Madison as well. Really tough matchup here for Alexander Madison, but the one thing we can you know take with Madison and at least like positively is that he's going to get the usage. If you look at his game log this season, you know, I know the week eight or the week two game against Philadelphia was a really tough game for Madison. He had a bunch of fumbles in that game, uh, only got 11 touches, but like week one against Tampa Bay, uh, you know, 11 carries and uh, four targets, uh, three receptions. So 14 touches in that game against the Chargers, 20 carries, five receptions. So 25 touches against Carolina, 17 carries and a reception, 18 touches. Against KC, uh, only got eight carries and two receptions. But then last week against Chicago, 18 carries, four receptions. They did sign Cam Akers, and Cam Akers has been playing some with the Vikings, but he's not really been taken much away from Madison. So I still expect Madison to be kind of the clear lead back for the Vikings. I don't want to say he's a workhorse back, but he's kind of close to it. I mean, if you do look at the snaps last week, Madison did play 79% of the snaps. Uh, you know, he's a kind of a game script proof back. Like, even if they're playing from behind. He's going to be out there catching passes. If they're playing from ahead, he'll still be out there getting carries. I expect his efficiency in this matchup to be pretty bad. Like I would not, I would not be surprised if Madison gets like 15 carries for like 30 rushing yards, but he's going to get all the volume he can handle. He's going to get pass game usage. He's probably going to get the goal line work as well. If they get near the goal line, he'll have that opportunity to score a touchdown. You're banking on usage here for Madison more than anything. The matchup's really, really bad. It's a tough spot. 49ers have been a very tough team to run on this season, but I definitely think Madison is in play just because he probably projects to see at least 15, 16 touches, and that's obviously you know good when you're talking about a guy priced at 6,600. Um, now we can talk about some of the value on the slate. There's not a ton of value that I love here, but we got a couple options we can mention. Uh, San, or DraftKings did bump up the San Francisco running backs just with the chance that Christian McCaffrey would sit, but, but, but because Christian McCaffrey is going to play, I don't really have any interest in Jordan Mason or Eli Mitchell. Maybe those guys get a few extra touches. Maybe Mitchell gets a few extra touches because McCaffrey's kind of banged up, but I don't think Mitchell's going to get enough touches to where he's really rosterable at his price tag. The kickers, they're fine values. Moody is kind of expensive for a kicker at 5,400, but I think he's still okay. Uh, Greg Joseph's 4,400. I think he's a solid value. 49ers defense, really good defense. Kirk Cousins is, is a statue in the pocket. He'll take sacks. He'll turn the ball over. The 49, uh, 49ers defense is fine to go to. I think their ownership could be a little bit inflated just because people do know that you know this is a good defense and it's probably a good matchup for their defense. So I would definitely pay attention to ownership. I always say that when it comes to defenses. If defenses are going to be popular, I'll just fade them. If they're going to be low owned, then yeah, I'm fine playing defense. It's just it's so tough to predict defense scoring, so I typically try and just avoid playing the, the high owned defenses on these showdown slates. Um, but let's talk about some of these other cheap values. You you got we got to talk about the 49ers receivers. I know I mentioned you know Juwan Jennings, Ray Ray McLeod. Um, who else did we talk about? Um, and then Ronnie Bell being the being the three guys that we expect to pick up more playing time here without Debo Samuel. I don't think any of these guys project to see a ton of targets, but I definitely think of all the 49ers receivers, the guy that I'm most confident in, obviously besides, you know, Ayuk and Kittle, is probably Juwan Jennings. I think Juwan Jennings probably gets the, you know, the best boost here of the three cheap receivers. He is 4K, so he's not like, uh, you know, super, super cheap or anything, but you do expect him to pick up more playing time here without Debo Samuel, probably see a few extra targets. If I had to guess, I think Jennings probably projects for like four to five targets here, maybe, maybe six. 
at 4K, that puts him in play. Um, he's definitely not like a slam dunk value, but I think he is at least playable because Debo's out or because Debo is out. And then you have Ray Ram Cloud at 2,200. Another guy that just hasn't really been able to earn any targets this season, but he should pick up some more playing time here without Debo Samuel. He is a fine punt play. And then Ronnie Bell, I think, also probably picks up some playing time without Debo. I mean, if you look at the snaps, if you look at the weeks that Brandon Ayuk has missed this season, so Brandon Ayuk uh, missed one game and then Juwan Jennings missed one game. If you look at the week where Brandon Ayuk was out, uh, obviously Debo Samuel played that game. But then the other three receivers... You got 31 snaps for Juwan Jennings, 38 snaps for Ray Ray McLeod, 31 snaps for Ronnie Bell. So they basically just ran like a three-man committee at wide receiver behind Debo Samuel when when Ayuk was out. And then when when Juwan Jennings was out, you saw 13 snaps for Ray Ray McLeod, nine snaps for Ronnie Bell. I think Ray Ray McLeod probably plays the most snaps of the three guys. I think Juwan Jennings probably projects to see the most volume. Um, Ray Ray McLeod's never really been like a great receiver. He's more of like a return man kind of. He is cheap enough, though, again, at 2200 where I think he's playable. If I had to rank the 49ers receivers, I would rank them how they're priced. Um, if we're talking about the value guys, Jennings first, then Ray, Ray McLeod, then uh, then Ronnie Bell. And then after that, you know, looking at some other value plays, I do want to talk about Brandon Powell. So Brandon Powell's only 2800 He was basically the wide receiver three last week for the Vikings, saw four targets, three catches for 20 yards. He's going to you know see more playing time here without Justin Jefferson and at this price tag of 2800 playing for a pass-heavy offense, playing for a team that's probably going to be playing from behind, I think this sets up as a you know decent spot for Brandon Powell. It's, I'm not expecting uh, like a big game for Brandon Powell, but I think he's going to see enough volume to where at 2800 he's going to project as a pretty good value play on this slate. So I think of all the value plays we've talked about, honestly, I think Brandon Powell is my favorite at 2800 I do like him more than the 49ers guys. Um you can still go to those guys like Jennings and McLeod, but I think Powell at 2,800 looks really good as a value. And then we'll also mention Cam Akers at 1,800. Cam Akers has been backing up um, Alexander Madison the last few weeks. You look at the first game he played with the Vikings, he got five carries and then had two receptions. Next week, he saw five carries, two receptions. Last week, only had one carry and one reception. I would think most weeks, though, we probably see like four four to six carries for Cam Akers and probably like two to four rece- or two to four targets. So at $1,800, like if he projects to see six, seven, eight touches, I think that's a, you know, he projects to see enough touches at this price tag to be playable. Now, am I like, am I loving Cam Akers as a value on the slate? Not really, but I think he's at least a viable option. If you want to go there at $1,800, I I expect he'll be lower owned than these receivers will. So you could go there as like a pivot in tournaments. Um, But I think that's pretty much it for this game. I mean, like you have Kyle Uzcheck at $600, Kyle Uzcheck. He can score a touchdown. I mean, we did see a week five against Dallas. He had four targets, four catches, got into the end zone. Maybe without Debo Samuel, maybe the 49ers use you know, Uzcheck more as a pass catcher. He's a punt play, I think, if you want to go there. Um, last week, Uzcheck play. Let's see. Where is he at for snaps? He played, I mean, he did play 34 snaps last week, but you know, a lot of those snaps, he's probably just out there blocking. I don't know really how many routes he ran last week. He's a viable punt option. I think that's, you know, it's it's touchdown or bust for a guy like Uzcheck. You could say that, though, for pretty much all these guys down here. Uh, but again, you know, I think, you know, Powell's the guy that probably projects the best of all the, of, uh, of all the value plays on this slate. Um, then $200-wise, I don't think there's really any $200 plays I, I'm in love with here. I don't think there's any guys down here that project to see enough playing time to where we should roster them. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's it for this showdown slate, I think. We kind of talked about all the playable options. Don't think I skipped over anybody. I think we talked about... Um, pretty much everyone. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I hope it did help. Make sure you guys hit that like button down below. If you guys uh, did enjoy, hit that subscribe button. If you have not yet, be sure to go check out the sponsor guys, Prize Picks. Sign up for Prize Picks. Use that promo code NOAH. When you do sign up, get your first deposit matched up to $100. When you sign up for Prize Picks with my promo code, be sure to use that free square for NBA. Again, that is available until Tuesday night when the NBA regular season starts. Use that free square and pair it with any other plays you like, whether it's NBA, NFL, doesn't really matter. You can mix and match sports on prize picks. There's a lot of flexibility with how you can build your entries. Uh, just make sure you use that square uh, until Tuesday when it goes away. And if you don't have an account on prize picks yet, use that promo code NOAH, so that way you do get your first deposit matched up to $100. But good luck tonight, guys. Good luck on this showdown slate for Monday Night Football. Hopefully we get a good game this Monday night. I'm kind of excited to watch this one, 49ers and Vikings. We'll see how it goes. But again, appreciate you guys watching. Best of luck, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.